What's going on everybody? Being a man from Toronto myself, I had this movie on my radar because it generated a sense of curiosity and excitement that Hollywood was finally considering exploring Toronto on the big screen. The Man from Toronto was originally announced to be released in theaters, but during my viewing, I quickly realized why this movie was a Netflix rollout. This action comedy movie has an unoriginal plot of mistaken identity that pairs a screw up sales consultant, Teddy Jackson, who's played by Kevin Hart with an assassin known as the Man from Toronto, played by Woody Harrelson. With Kevin Hart in a comedic role, 99% of the time, you know exactly what you're getting. And there was no surprise in this movie. This movie relied on Kevin Hart's trademark style of humor, which mainly involves lots of shouting and self-deprecating humor. I think Kevin Hart is hilarious. I love the man's stand-up comedy. But in this film, his humor felt forced and majority of his jokes didn't land. I think he may need to change the pace here. And I would like to see him increase his acting range as he does have the acting chops for more dramatic roles. He displayed great dramatic acting in another Netflix original called True Story. I recommend checking that out if you already haven't. But back to the man from Toronto. Kevin is funny at times, especially during the action sequences. Kevin Hart's banter can be heard and most of the time it comes off natural. It's sort of reminding me of the Chris Tucker banter from the Rush Hour series, where the guy that can't fight is the loudest and does the most trash talking to the enemy. It was noticeable that Kevin Hart's energy wasn't being matched by his co-stars on screen. At times, you can tell Kevin Hart is being, well, Kevin Hart and ad-libbing comedic lines and that those lines clearly aren't in the script. And I could tell this from the reactions of his co-stars. They weren't reciprocating accordingly to his improv. It's like they couldn't keep up with Kev. And we're just like, uh, that's not part of the script, but I'm just going to say my own lines regardless of what Kevin had just said. I think that's where the chemistry of Dwayne The Rock Johnson and Kevin Hart really flourishes. The Rock matches Kevin Hart's energy and is able to make quick comebacks to help lift the scene and to make it more natural. Speaking of his co-stars, Kevin Hart plays opposite Woody Harrelson, who is the assassin known as the man from Toronto. And I know he isn't really from Toronto because he repeatedly pronounces all the letters in the word Toronto. It's pronounced Toronto, bruh. Any true Toronto mans would know that. And another dead giveaway that he wasn't from Toronto was that he never says, whose mans is this? In a movie about mistaken identity, you'd think at least once, Harrelson would look Kevin Hart up and down and ask, whose mans is this? In a Torontonian accent. I mean, even Kawhi Leonard learned the mannerisms of a Toronto man, and he was here just one year. Time, big time shot. Look at the expression on Kawhi. But aside from that, Harrelson does an all right job of playing the hardened killer, who is written to be like a John Wick mixed with the transporter. Speaking of the transporter, Jason Statham was originally casted as a stone cold assassin, but exited due to creative differences. This is because he was pushing for R rating, which I can see to his point as some of the scenes could have pushed the envelope. By not being in it, I think Jason dodged a bullet. The chemistry between Hart and Harrelson is not memorable, nor really believable. And it left me wondering why a legendary assassin would even waste his time with a loser like Kevin Hart's character. Aside from the main story, there is an alternative storyline of Kevin Hart's wife, which is equally, if not more, uninteresting. So, let's get real. This movie tried to capitalize on the Canadian market through its title, but it's quickly obvious that it has nothing to do with Toronto except maybe a few location shots. This quick cash grab along with the uninteresting story and poor CGI has left a sour taste in my mouth. So you can go ahead and just skip this one as there are better action comedy movies out there. The only redeemable quality of this film is a fight sequence at the end which slightly elevated my viewing experience of the movie. They should have definitely incorporated this style of fighting and camera work earlier on in the movie. So with all that being said, my rating of this film is a 2 out of 5 stars. Well guys, those are my thoughts on the Netflix film, The Man From Toronto. As always, if you enjoyed this video, leave a thumbs up and remember to subscribe for more TV and movie reviews. Until next time, peace.